when I separated from my ex-husband, I felt raw. I felt vulnerable and I had never really set boundaries and always put his needs before mine. So it was crucial for me to learn how to do that so that I could protect my peace moving forward. Setting boundaries is a crucial skill to develop as we navigate our life after separation and it encourages us to keep growing and to keep going on our new path. And we all know what boundaries are. They're limits beyond which we're not willing to compromise. We have hard lines, we have soft lines, hard boundaries, soft boundaries where we're willing to negotiate, but not having any boundaries is not productive. And once we separate, it's even more crucial to develop those boundaries so that we know how we're going to engage not only with our former partner, but how we want to engage with future partners. So there are different types of boundaries. There are emotional boundaries where you protect your energy and your emotions. There are physical boundaries where you protect your body and your physical space. And there are also digital boundaries that are going to govern your online presence and your online interactions. And setting clear boundaries after a separation is really critical for a number of reasons. One, it helps you to maintain emotional stability. Two, it helps to reduce conflict and stress. It fosters independence and self-reliance. And it also creates a space for you to heal and to grow. So what do you need? To be able to set effective boundaries, first of all, you have to know what you want. You have to know what you need. Without that clarity, it's very difficult to set boundaries that you're going to be able to stick to. So I invite you to ask yourself three things. What makes you feel uncomfortable and drained in your interactions with your ex? Also, what are your emotional triggers? And finally, what do you need to feel safe and to feel protected? What you needed before your divorce may not be what you need today. So really take an honest look and answer these questions honestly, because it's going to be the foundation upon which you're going to build your boundaries moving forward. So once you're clear about your needs and your wants, you can establish your boundaries. And then it's about communicating those effectively with your ex-partner. And remember to use statements like, I need, I want, because this makes it really about you. And it doesn't bring in any blame element or anything like that that could cause your ex-partner to feel conflict. So remember to be calm, to be clear, but also to be assertive. The second thing after communicating clearly with your partner is establishing co-parenting guidelines if you have kids. So create a structured plan for when you're going to see each other, what happens with the children, who takes who, where, when, and how. And you will have to take his boundaries into account as well. But here's the key. The children come first. Do not use your children as a weapon. They are gentle souls whose world has just been turned upside down. They know you as a pair. They don't know you as two separate individuals. And the third thing is managing shared responsibilities and assets. Clearly define how you'll handle ongoing commitments so that there is less confusion and less conflict. And remember, setting boundaries really isn't about winning or punishing your ex. It's about establishing the guidelines and the playground within which you want to play in a way that is supportive. But setting boundaries is just the beginning. Then you have to enforce them because if you don't enforce them, you'll get walked all over. And there are a few things that you can do to make sure that you are enforcing those boundaries. The first thing and probably the most important thing is be consistent. Don't waffle, right? There will be exceptions to the rule, but a rule is a rule for a reason. So make sure that you're strong and that you don't say yes one day and no the other. Be calm, use clear language when you're talking about your needs, and make sure that you have consequences for when those boundaries are obliterated, because it will happen. And also practice self-compassion, because enforcing boundaries when you're not used to doing that will be a bit of a challenge. And then things change, right? So there might come a time when you need to reassess and you need to redefine what those boundaries are. Just remember to keep yourself at the root and not make it about judgment. Just do what's right for you and redefine those boundaries in a way that feels supportive. And don't forget to communicate that clearly so that the other party knows exactly where they stand and what line they're not allowed to cross. 
being flexible is actually an asset. It doesn't mean you're weak. It doesn't mean really anything beyond the fact that something changed and you need to adapt. It shows resilience and it shows fortitude. Setting boundaries is a bit of an art. It requires patience. It requires practice. And it also requires self-compassion. And it's about striking a balance between protecting your peace and remaining open so that you can learn and you can grow. So remember, this is personal. Boundaries are a very personal thing. And what matters most is that the boundaries serve you and serve your journey moving forward so you can continue to grow and love.